Back in May of 2018, I had some young ladies on the podcast, and they talked about volunteering and everything they do. And what I wanted to do was bring that podcast back and let you all hear it again, especially with school being out. Last podcast, I mentioned a little bit about volunteering. So on this episode of Harford County Living, I have Grace Callwood and some of the members of the We Can Serve movement. listening to the Harford County Living Podcast with Rich Bennett. Thank you for coming and please send any suggestions or comments to podcast at harfordcountyliving.com. The Harford County Living Podcast is produced for your enjoyment and show notes can be found at harfordcountyliving.com. Come back often and feel free to add the podcast to your favorites, RRS feed, or iTunes. All links are in the show notes. Now let's join Rich Bennett and his special guest. like to welcome everybody to the Harford County Living Podcast. We actually have a room full of people this time. Uh, we have John and Jennifer, along with Ellis, TJ, of course, Lyle with the Leo's Club, and Alexia, and a young lady who I have to say it is actually an honor and a privilege to finally have her on the show, uh, Grace, with the We Conser- Conserve Movement. Um, and those of you that haven't heard the name Grace Callwood, then you've been... Did I pronounce the last name right, Colwood? Yes. You've been living under a rock or something. Um, Very big, not just in Harford County, but I I want to say everywhere for, what, 13 years old? Yes, I'm 13 years old. I mean, just amazing that everything that she's done um, so far. But uh, with the We Can Serve movement, and you start, well, you know, better better yet, before we get into that part, tell us a little bit about yourself first. Um, my name is Grace Colwood. I am 13 years old in the seventh grade, and um, I started the Weekends Are Movement Incorporated um, in 2012 when I was seven years old. Seven years old? Yes. You start. How did this one at seven go about starting something like this? I have always loved community service. I've been do- doing community service ever since I was two, and so... What? Um, yes. <laughs> Yes. Two years old. Uh, when I was two years old, I was hospitalized for a short, short amount of time, and um, I had the opportunity to donate a red wagon to um, the hospital, the pediatric unit of a hospital, and so I wanted to. And then when I was three, I donated. Um, Mom, was it? Oh, I donated clothes. Um, and then when I was four years old, I collected canned food instead of um, gifts for my fourth birthday. When, but you did all this, and you were in the hospital. You said um, one or? time. No, it all. Uh, the first time I was in the hospital when I was two, and okay. then um, when I was seven years old, I was diagnosed with stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer, and I had the opportunity to give my back-to-school clothes to two little girls who had lost their home in a fire. I oh, was homeschooled, wow. and I um, I was just too sick to go to school, and so I decided to donate my clothes to them because I didn't need them. And my mom went to deliver the clothes for me since I was too sick to go. And when she came back and told me about how happy they were, I knew that giving back is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So um, after a few more projects, I really realized that I could make a difference. And so I started the We Can Serve Movement Incorporated. Wow. Very good. Very good. It's seven years old. Your kids are free now, right? Yes. (laughs) Damn, that's even better. I love that. So you, you started this at seven. You're 13 now. And you have a you actually have a board and everything. Yes, we have a. But you have a different team. board. That I'm sorry, to cut you off, but your your board is not like other nonprofits out there. And you are five hundred one c three, right? Yes. All right, explain your board because this this <laughs> is what gets me. <laughs> we have an all youth board of advisors. Um, we have thirteen board members, including myself, including Alexia, who is here with us today. And um, we have it to be an all youth board of advisors because I think that youth have. Um, the best ideas, we kind of avoid the problems that adults always remember, and so we try to find the easier way out sometimes. So I just think that youth have a better outlook sometimes on different problems. 
wait a minute, you're sitting here with a bunch of adults right now. You know that, right? No, I have to agree with you. I mean, it's, and a lot of times, I think when you put those minds together, you just come up with even more ideas. Mm -hmm. So, is there a certain age limit for the Board of Advisors? Yes, the board members are between ages 8 and 18. 8? Yes. And 18? Yes. All right, now I'm going to ask you a trick question here. Because a lot of people are probably thinking, all right, if there's a bunch of kids running this, they probably ain't, aren't doing a whole lot. Now, I know otherwise. Can you tell us what, I mean, all the different things that you're doing? And if you have to do it by season, because you do things by different seasons, yes. right? So uh, we recently just finished up extra special Easter baskets. We actually switched to bags, so now they are bags kits. But um, because we did bags because it's better for the environment and they're recyclable, whereas we did baskets and they were being thrown away and not reused. But with bags, you can reuse them or recycle them, and it's cheaper as well. So, um, (laughs) so... (laughs) Yeah, that could be. So, um, but we um, we did extra special Easter bags kits, which go to homeless sick and foster children. Um, also, soon we are about to have our um, um, we are about to have a workshop at a teen, at a um, group home for teen girls in foster care on May fifth. Um, it's just a self esteem and a preparation workshop for them before they age out of the system, and then um, we will have our boutique um, opening. Um, on around May 19th, um, we have a boutique for teen girls in foster care. It's a two-room on-site boutique that is free for them, and um, it has clothes appropriate for work and worship and also has prom dresses and homecoming dresses. And oh, wow. then we will also, we are in preparation for Camp Happy, which is a summer enrichment program for homeless children. We are doing it this year at Anna's House, which is a um, Homeless Shelter for Women and Children in uh, Bel Air, and Harper Family House, which is a transitional housing program for homeless families in Aberdeen. Camp and, Happy. Yes. And so at Camp Happy, we have um, field trips, guest speakers, and um, outdoor activities. Um, and so we also have Camp Carnival on the last day of camp as a big celebration. And then... After that, we have Threads of Hope, um, which is uh, the founding project, actually. We give every child living at Harf Family House um, a back-to-school outfit, either new or like new clothes. And so we got, try to give each child two or three outfits, and we've done that every year since we started. And then we have... Um, mm-hmm. Jump in anytime you want, Alexia. Yeah, She's stumped definitely, here. definitely. <laughs> yes. um, I, I, how are you? You're still going to school. Yes. Everybody on the board of advisors is still going to school. Yes. Where do you find the time to do all this? It's all magic. Oh, no. Uh, I love that answer. That was good. Uh, <laughs> but, um, I mean, it's a lot of after schools like today. Today was after school. It's a lot of after schools and weekends. And, um, I mean, as long as I prioritize correctly, then I should be good. So, you know, it's just all strategy, I guess. This is on top of. Uh, other activities like sports and, and after school clubs and yes. <laughs> everything else. Wow, yeah. busy schedules. Yeah. You need to go talk to some other youth groups. And <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, how do you do this? <laughs> now, how did uh, everybody on the board? Or, you know what, actually, better, yeah, the Alexia, because you're, you're sitting there quiet. I'm going to throw this one to you. How did you come about meeting Grace? So my mom was on Facebook one day, and she saw the We Can Serves web or like Facebook page, right? And she said that they were looking for new board of advisors, and she said, "Why don't you um, apply and see if you can make it in?" And um, I Good applied, for you, mom. <laughs> and I made it in, and I was really happy. And then at the board meeting, I met Grace and all the other board members. Now, do you have a president of the board, or is it just everybody shares the same role? I mean, we try to keep it pretty equivalent. I'm the chairwoman. Right. Uh, I'm the founder and chairwoman of the We Can Serve movement. But, I mean, you know, it's a shared space. We all, there are no wrong answers. Everyone is welcome to do stuff. So try to keep it pretty fair. That's awesome. Now, how is it? Let me make sure I word this properly. I'll just throw that there. How can, not the people, but how can other organizations help you? Um, well, we always, like, so with, hmm, let's see. 
I mean, we always are looking for more places to help, definitely. So um, telling us other places to help, definitely, is always good. Like, we always hear from other places or even places we help. They're telling us, you know, there are these homeless shelters that also could use your help. Or, and then we also do collaborations a lot. Um, we always try That's to work good. together. Like we work with um, all the boys and girls clubs of Hartford County oh, to did? do a lot of our projects. Okay. Yes, definitely. And so I mean, we've worked with the Lioness Club. Um, they donated oh, to Aberdeen? the boutique. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yep. And so um, a lot of collaboration is definitely key in this organization and the mm-hmm. way we work. Now, how can individuals help? It? I mean, do you have like volunteer opportunities, or can people donate goods or money? Definitely, all of our projects are pretty much volunteer-based. We um, rely a lot on our community support. Um, a lot of our projects are like stuffing parties or different things like that where community members can come in and actually do the hands-on work. All right, now you've been doing this for a few years now. I, this just feels weird talking to a 13-year-old about this, but it's, <laughs> I, your, your story so inspirational, and I hope that a lot of younger people listen to this. Not just younger people, but even older people listen to it. Because you're an inspiration for it. Um, But now I got totally thrown off where I was going (laughs) with this question. Um, Jeez, help me out here, Lyle. I was getting ready to say something about kids and everything. I forgot. (laughs) You talked about, oh, the homeless, because you do a lot with the homeless. And I used to be for a nonprofit years ago called Open Doors Career Center, where we actually did a lot with them, too. Hopefully, we'll see that number go down even further. But since you've been doing this, have you seen that number dropping? Or have you seen it going up? I um, I feel like I haven't really kept up too much with the numbers um, as far as, like, homelessness population goes. And we help homeless children specifically. Right. So, like, we have noticed that I guess there is a change or a greater need within the school system for homeless children, definitely. Like, yeah. we just recently started working with local elementary schools who have, um, like, an over 90% rate of poverty within the school children. So, like, wow. we did notice that that was a big deal, but we also were just learning about that. So, um, we have noticed that has increased as far as, like, school-age children, but I'm not too familiar right. with the numbers. Well, hopefully that number will go down to where it's nobody. Exactly. It would be nice. Because yeah. I, I, I do know, uh, God, years ago when we did it, because um, my sister was one of the ones that went around and counted. And I think at the one time it was over 400, close to 500 homeless. But the last... Children or total? Total. Total. Um, true. <laughs> no. I, that would be a lot of mm-hmm. homeless children. But I think, now this is just in Harford County. I think the last time it was under 300. When we just did the, um, for the routine homeless shelter, didn't Adam say it was under 300? Yeah, it was pushing close to 200. Yeah, Yeah. so, I mean, luckily that number is dropping. I hope it will go down to completely Those zero. numbers are so hard to manage, though. They really, are. Because, you know, they're based on the point of time survey. Right. Yeah. And so, but not everybody is in a position to report in for many reasons. Some people That's don't want to be counted. In that number, but right now there are Grayson and I are both on the board of directors for Hartford Family House. Oh, you are okay. And so right now there are 150 families in Hartford County who are waiting to get on, uh, to get housing. So those okay. are the people who are unhoused. Right. Um, there are, I think there's 121 families somewhere around there that are. Um, I don't remember the number, so let me back off of that. I hope you're edited some of this. No. <laughs> you must. <laughs> That's okay. We didn't, I can't numbers don't number. need to be yeah. accurate. But. Yeah, but there are 150 on the waiting list right now. Right. But the then thing we is, count, they, they're still out there. Oh, yeah. And so as she was saying, you know, they have homeless, sick, and foster children specifically. Right. And so those numbers will vary depending on how many kids the homeless adults present. Because sometimes the homeless adults will send their children with to relatives, uh, right? Yeah. And then they present right. themselves as homeless until they become stable and, stable and they can get their kids back. But what also sometimes happens, which is coming up quite timely for them in particular, for We Can Serve in particular, is that sometimes children find themselves homeless because that's the status of their parents. Mm-hmm. So it could be through abandonment, neglect, mental illness, or it could be that children find themselves homeless because of, you know, runaway situations, abuse at home. Yeah. Or it could be a lifestyle conflict. Parents are not accepting of a child's lifestyle. 
And so just in the last six months, we can serve, develop the relationship with the Youth Empowered Society, which is a drop-in day shelter in Baltimore and Charles Village. So just the mere thought that there are 15 to 24-year-olds who don't have anywhere to live is, is really... Um, is really heartbreaking. Yeah. And we know that there are there's some degree of that population here in Harford County. We don't have the numbers for that or how, you know, rampant that is. So I wonder if a lot of those numbers, like you said, aren't even aren't even factored in. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. yeah. Now do you work close with any of the churches or anything? Because I know, you know, with homeless people, sick kids, faith is a big thing too. Mm -hmm. You know, so I mean do you work close with them as well? Yes, we partner with churches. We have worked with churches, and we also have donated to churches that have um, feeding ministries or food pantries. Um, so, yes. Wait a minute. Did you just say you donated to churches? Well, yes, that have um, feeding ministries that okay. can end up helping the homeless Okay. or those who need it. So if there anybody else out there that any other churches or anybody that does this, if they want to help out, they can contact you as well, right? Definitely. What's the website? Um, I know, I'm testing you here. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, wecanserve.org, W-E-C-A-N-C-E-R-V-E dot -E -E org. And what's the, is there a number anybody can call? Or no. best just to go to the website for the contact form? Yes. Or the Facebook page? Yes, we have uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, all at We Can Serve Movement Incorporated. Or We Can wow. Serve. Now, do you go out and speak to other groups? In other words, like we, we and Law and I were talking about this with the Leos. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, do you go? Well, I know you did with the Lions, but do you go out and, and I guess, well, like you're telling me, tell everybody, but I, well, if the young kids, if you tell them, I think it's going to lift them up and give them ideas too. Yes, definitely. Um, I just recently did a speaking engagement at. Um, it was a, a mentoring group for young girls who are in fifth grade about to go to sixth grade at Deerfield Elementary School. And so right I, um, yes, and so um, I talked to them about finding your inner strength and being prepared for um, going to middle school and just everything that you need to do. And then also talking about community service and how finding your inner strength connects to that because their mentoring group also does a lot of community service. That's almost like the foundation of how they formed. And so, um, like I've spoken at um, some of the um, Hartford County Public Libraries over the summer, doing summer speeches and different things like that. You're just, when you, when you become an adult, you're just going to be touring the country being a motivational <laughs> speaker, aren't you? That'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, is your, what is your goal? What do you want to be when you graduate school? I actually have no idea. I used to know. I mean, I have... A lot of options. I know I want to be a philanthropist. I know I definitely want to. You already to are. Be, yeah. yeah. I want to, yeah. I guess, be better or be a bigger philanthropist. I want to definitely continue this work and um, possibly be a motivational speaker. It's something that incorporates giving back and travel because I love traveling, definitely. So, Alexia, I mean, is she good at keeping you all motivated? Yes. Uh, you got to walk me through a meeting. I mean, how does it go? I, I'm president of a club. She be, uh, throw me some pointers here. <laughs> so at the meeting, she was very well prepared. Um, she had all her notes down and ready to go. She emailed us all about all the points that we'd go over during the meeting. Uh, at She's always very prepared. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank like, really? 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 <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, and you're, okay, so you're setting all the notes and everything. What does everybody else on the board do? We come, we give suggestions on how we can improve or any new ideas um, we can do to help out. Uh, we come to all... We come to as many events as we can and help out there. And we introduce ourselves to community members that come out. And that's... Yeah, I was yeah. going to be my next question, too. With events, do you go up and set up at different events and introduce yourself, whether it be an arts festival or whatever, to get the word out? So, yes, we have, um, the, there's the boutique that we are opening up, and um, it is, is it open to 
hateful. Um, so this the boutique opening is going to be by invitation only, but we are putting it out to a lot of people, definitely, and it's very community-based. We want a lot of people to just come and have fun, and then, you know, some of the events that will be happening. Um, so about at the um, opening, like opening the we are going to play bingo and have prizes. There will also be crafts. We're going to be making jewelry for the boutique. Um, one of the board members, they, uh, she knows how to make jewelry, so um, she is going to be working with the girls and making jewelry for the boutique. You guys just had a lot of stuff <laughs> on your list. So each of these uh, board members, um, they step up to the plate and become project managers for the various projects that 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 uh, We Can Serve has. So Alexia has been working hard with another board member, Ashley, on getting the boutique ready. The boutique opened in 2016, just right here in Bel Air. And it's like they were saying, it's a, a, at a group home for teenage girls in foster care. Now, we all recognize that foster care, uh, children in foster care will age out of the system yeah. at 21. So that's the workshop that Grace was talking about on May 5th is that, you know, this workshop is going to help, you know, aid and, you know, supplement the learning that they're getting to get them ready to, to age out. But while they're there, they can access this boutique for free clothes. And we're talking very stylish clothes that are appropriate for worship and work, but still stylish. So they get, imagine shoes. There was a bridal shop somewhere in Bel Air anonymously donated a bunch of shoes and then there's jewelry. You know, some of my dear friends, one one of my good friends actually donated a diamond ring. What? I know. I There was a part of me that was, you know, eyeballing it, but it was for the children. <laughs> it was for the children. Anything for the children. <laughs> so, but yeah, it was awesome. So, so but anyway, these, these young people, the amount of work that they put in getting this boutique ready. So what does that mean? Like they were saying, it's a two-room boutique, and there's a lot of work that has to happen seasonally, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where they um, have to change out the uh, clothes. And so you don't do the boutique just once a year? Oh. No, uh, it's an ongoing boutique, so it is all year round. We go in um, every once in a while, and so we pretty much just change out the clothes. We get a lot of donations as well. So we go through the clothes, make sure we um, separate them to what we will keep and what we won't. We also have... We always try to have one of the girls actually live at the um, group home so that they can tell us what they think they would actually wear so that we know. Because, right. like, we're, like, like some of the board members are 16, some of us are 12 or 13. There's an even 8-year-old girl. So all of our styles are very different. Right. I mean, even from today, our styles are different. And so, like, we need to um, ask from one of the girls there to see what they would actually wear to get her opinion and everything. But it's not just clothes for girls. It's for guys too right it's an all girls um group home oh it, oh mm -hmm. i knew that <laughs> i was testing you now what's as far as the clothes go age limit eight is it eight to six why can you do an age limit on clothes um the yeah. girls there, size um the girls there age is 14 to 21 they age out at 21 okay. and so we we try to take all sizes though like we stay in the juniors we don't take any kids sizes but we do stay in the juniors because there are 14-year-old girls that come in. I mean, we someone told us that there was a 14-year-old girl that come in. She had nothing. So she went straight to the boutique and just got clothes to actually live in because she came with nothing. So there are girls of all sizes there, so we just accept all sizes. So when the people come in, come to the boutique for clothes, now do you charge them or, they, or you give it to them? We just give it to them. It's free for them, and okay. um, it's always open. And one of the people at the um, group home actually, like, watch over it. For those of you listening, here's a bit of advice. For now on, when your kids outgrow their clothes, instead of giving them to Goodwill, who's going to charge somebody for them, give them the We Can Serve instead because that's at least that is going out and they're giving them to other people that need them. So that, that's key there. Now, we were talking about other events that you do, but let's say, um, I don't know, we have arts festivals coming up. We have uh, a pet fest. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Do you guys just set up a booth there to meet people? Um, we actually or do you even have, have the time? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, we haven't done that in a few years. I think like the last time we did something like that was a few years ago. But I mean, 
um, like a few years ago, we used to have water bottles with a logo on it. And we had headphones, and so now we have earbuds, which we are selling for five dollars now. So with the logo on the case, and so it's a cool casing and everything, and it's the color green because that's in our logo. Our logo is multicolored. So, um, but we were just kind of looking for things to sell and give out and different things. Um, we'll probably make like uh, informational cards telling them what's coming up next and what volunteer opportunities they are. Um, and so, but we are we do want to kind of get out there more. We just kind of needed something to put ourselves out there with. Right. Well, you're definitely getting out there. I mean, every I, I, there's a lot of people that know about you. I was talking to, actually I had a meeting um, the other day with, we. I think we were talking about earlier, Family Faith Ministries. And I was talking to the executive director there, and I was telling her how you were coming on the show, and she knew, knew about you. Um, and when I told Lyle about it, and he looked at the website, he's like, Definitely got to get some leaders involved with this. Or have you come to a leaders meeting and talk to them? Because it's just everything. And Alexia, too. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, everything you guys do, it, I mean, it's just amazing. It still shocks me how you do it all and find the time. Mm. You know, it, it's, as an adult, I'd be pulling my, what little hair I have left <laughs> now because I'd be, there's, I, I don't get it. I don't see how you guys do it. Well, I think the, the amazing thing is that you guys are doing it pretty much on your own that's that's the big thing and love doing it too yes yeah. we do that's the other thing yes it is yeah. youth-led but we also do rely a lot on our community support right. and our parents mm -hmm. as well because we can't drive yes. so right. and we we don't have the car storage or the house storage so we definitely yeah. need our parents and parents bring on great ideas as well and a lot of hard work and effort so we definitely appreciate everyone would you tell my leos that i was gonna say would you tell my, that, you tell my daughter that, that <laughs> parents yeah. come up with great ideas too <laughs> I think the only one that believes that is my son. Yeah. <laughs> my daughter would be like, no, Dad, my generation doesn't do that. <laughs> yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? Look, your mom's sitting there nodding her head, so you better add some stuff. So, Alexia, I can't. Did I say that right? Alexia, right? Yes. Alexia. So we, we need volunteers and sponsors for Camp Happy. And Camp Happy, okay. So... We were wondering if Leo could help out with Camp Happy. Is if the Leos could help out yes. Camp Happy? I will certainly present it to them. Yeah, I'd, I'd like, actually, I'd like both of you, if you can, to come and speak to them at, at uh, one of our next meetings. Awesome. Um, I, I, I think it, it, it really helps to have their own generation a lot of times speak and get them motivated. You know, they look at me as somebody... That almost like a, their, their parent telling them what to do. And, you know, sometimes it works, a lot of times it doesn't. <laughs> because, you know, we were all kids once. We, we know things, that, you know, the old, old people don't know things. Um, and, you know, <laughs> so they kind of act that way sometimes. Um, so if I could have, you know, uh, their own peer group, their own generation speaking to them, motivating them, that would be fantastic. And I think they would jump on board with what you're doing. Awesome. And so, when is Camp Happy? Uh, it starts. Yeah. It's, it's July ninth. July 9th. Oh, it's in July. Yes. July, and then it ends August second. Why don't you tease them a little bit and tell them some background on, on how Camp Happy came to be and and what happens at Camp Happy? Okie doke. So. <laughs> so. Already then. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Camp Happy was created in two thousand fifteen. Um. Um, I was, oh man, I was 10 years old. And so um, we had just built a relationship with Anna's House, which is a um, home and shelter for women and children in Bel Air. And um, we were doing a tour of their site just to see what all they had, what we thought they needed. And our initial thoughts were to um, maybe do a library, like a weekend serve library for the children living there because they had this huge playroom and the entire downstairs was pretty much dedicated for the children living there. But then when we got there and we saw that, um, we saw their facility their site we realized that they didn't need any books so we were just kind of thinking like okay what can we give to them and then um the director there um <laughs> she was just wishing out loud saying i wish we had a summer enrichment program for the children here so within four days within four days me and my mom <coughs> created a summer camp for the children there it was four days a week um it was for four weeks and you know, we just, we brought in guest speakers, we had field trips, we had people come to them, we had just, we have themed weeks, so every week has a theme, 
and um, we just made it as fun as we could within a good amount of time so we could make it happen. And so then the next year in 2016, we expanded it to Hartford Family House. And that, um, in 2016, it was seven weeks. And so it was longer days. Wow. And we partnered <clears throat> with Empower for 10. And so um, they, um, they help homeless children within Baltimore and really focus on um, health and fitness. Right. And so they came in and they took over for a while, which was great. So we definitely were, love working with them. And then last year, they also helped with Camp Happy at Hartford Family House, and they took over three out of the four weeks for us. So they completely planned everything, which was great. And we, <laughs> so, like we needed the help definitely, so it was it was great. They are great to work with, and we had a camp director, and so we gave them a stipend, and uh, the camp director was great. It worked out perfectly, and so um, this year we definitely we are going to have Camp Happy at Anna's house for one week. Each day is going to have a different theme, and then. Camp Happy for four weeks at Harford Family House. And where's Anna's house again? Bel Air. Bel Air. And Harford Harford, yeah. <laughs> Harford Family House? Aberdeen. Aberdeen, okay. Yes. I think that'd be something great for the leaders to help out with. And now are adult, are adult, adults allowed to help out with this? Or just children? Yes, definitely. We could take okay. any help that we can get. Um, we have camp counselors and junior camp counselors, pretty much. That's kind of what we can serve board members do. We are like camp counselors or junior camp counselors, I guess. And so we pretty like we're allowed to participate in the activities, definitely. But like if someone needs you to hand out paper or coloring pages, that's our job. If you need us to go um, run by the store to get something, that is our job. All right, now I got to ask you this because Lions also has a uh, camp which is called Camp Possibilities for Kids with Diabetes. Oh, nice. Uh, which is, I believe it's in Darlington. Talk to Larry or Pam Burton, they'll tell you all about it. Um, but I think that's in, that might be in June. But with your camp, because and I told my daughter, I said, you should volunteer to go up there. Oh, I can't go away for two weeks. Now, is this something where, you know, Camp Happy, do you have to spend the night there? Or? No, this is, um, Camp this, Happy is on site for the children, so it is actually on their facility, so they don't have to travel anywhere. Um, and it's also a day camp, so, um, like, it's all during the day. It's about, um, just about the same amount of time that you would at school. And it's a summer enrichment program, so we do have bridge work to keep them kind of in the school setting. But it is more fun because it is summer. Okay. So, because I know a lot of kids that, you know, that want to be counselors or whatever, they hear camp, and that's the first thing they think, well, I can't afford to, well, I can't afford, right? I can't mm -hmm. go away for two weeks or a week, and it's right here in Harford County. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you know, my daughter's just like you. She <laughs> relies on her parents to drive her somewhere. <laughs> but it, but even some adults, some of the leaders do drive, too. Mm -hmm. And I think it's be something great for, not just for them, but, like, you know, like we said, for everybody, I want to bring it up to the Lions as well. Yeah, I think we I could think help. that'd be great. Help to help yeah. Out. Yeah. And like, as far as with the adults, or even some of the older kids as well, we're always looking for guest speakers and places to go for field trips as well. So like, if there's a sports uh -oh. team that's willing to like, teach the kids or like, just play soccer with the kids and you have to teach this, like get them out of their own facility. Like, we could definitely use that. Or like, if someone has a skill, like if they're, I mean, even if they're I don't know, like a carpenter or something. Like you could like show your wood creations to the kids. I don't know, but something fun for them to just like explore and learn about. Hmm. So the whole idea behind Camp Happy, which is really exciting for me, is that as, as Gracie said, I got a chance to <clears throat> play with her and imagine um, summer fun. And I borrowed a lot from my own childhood, and I borrowed a lot from, and she did too, from her childhood in creating. Uh, the first model for Camp Happy. And that model is really about old-fashioned summer fun at no or low cost. Right. Because I remember growing up skipping rocks in the creek. Oh, And I'll running in that. the woods <laughs> and relay races just because it's Tuesday. You know? <laughs> and and yeah. eating popsicles, you know, with money that back in those days that we found that dropped in the register in the house. So, I mean, and it, those kind of memories I'll never trade. And, yeah. you know, when you think about homeless children, you know, they so much of their lives are disrupted because they're homeless and they move from place to place or hotel to friend's house and couch hopping yeah. to unfortunately sometimes sleeping in the car or the woods. And so now that they're at Anna's house or Harford family house, there's a degree of stability but that has a timeline. 
They're mm -hmm. only there for X number of months, right? right? But while they're there, what we can serve is doing is making sure they still retain a semblance of childhood. And so that's where the community comes in. It's like, well, let, let, let us dig deeply into our own memories of what, what summer fun we had. Because you know what's going to happen in September when they all go back to school. The question's going to come. What, what did, did you, you do, yeah, that's right. you do over, over the summer? summer. Right. We don't want those children to not have stories. Yeah. So we do need your listeners out there who are, you know, really good in STEM fields. Or as, as Grace and Alexia were just explaining, who have carpentry and other skills or those older teenagers in particular who are on various sports teams who wouldn't mind just saying, hey, why don't we have a day in the park and we'll show you a couple of cool, you know, foot tricks. What do I know about soccer? Yeah. I'll, I'll come learn. I mean, trust me, I learned how to do the whipping and nene from a bunch of, <laughs> <laughs> bunch of teenage girls, and it was uh, atrocious. <laughs> but I'm good at it now. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh, I don't have my DJ system in here because I'd be throwing that on right now. I'm watching you do it. Oh, it was a sight God. to see. Oh, you did it with the teen girls in foster care, actually. Yeah, it was with the teen girls in foster care. That really is how we, how the boutique came yeah. about. Is something happened in that moment? <laughs> but <laughs> say that story so, for now. Uh, for, so for <laughs> the last day of camp, happy. Do you guys have a big? Shindig or whatever? Yes, that is Camp Carnival. It's the biggest day. We spend the entire week planning for Camp Carnival. The fourth week, we um, take one of the activity, I guess, blocks of the day, and we just make carnival games. We have the kids make their own games because it feels good when you make something and then be able to use it. Like, it just feels good knowing that I made that, and then it helped other people. So we do that for the kids. We just show them how to make the games, and then we celebrate on the last day of camp. We have usually my dad grills or we... You know, we just find food, and so it's just a big celebration. So, you, <laughs> now we're going to bring back memories. Mm -hmm. So, you have the Kids Creek Carnival games. You're not going to an actual carnival. You're doing the carnival there. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We host the carnival. Okay. I, I don't know if you guys remember, but as kids, that's one of the things I used to love doing. I think muscular dystrophy had a thing where you could hold a carnival in your yard, and that's what it was. It was these games that... You, we would create and do that. And then I never see anybody doing that anymore until now. <laughs> you know, oh, so. yeah. Pinterest is our friend. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, there's actually quite a story about Carnival. Um, it was on her seventh birthday. At her oh. seventh birthday party, the theme was Carnival. Um, and so her birthday actually fell on a Friday. And that's the day I took her to the pediatrician. And so that Saturday is when we had this carnival game. And so I didn't want Grace forever to feel like turning seven was unlucky right. because that's when she was diagnosed. I mean, shortly after I went that to the party, doctor on my birthday. she went to the doctor on her birthday. And then with less than three weeks later, she was in and out of surgery and diagnosed. And so we were determined not to let seven be unlucky for her. And we didn't want this wonderful carnival of games that we made, you know, to ever, yeah. you know, and all these pictures to be a, you know, a stinker for her. So, so it was her idea. Why don't we add that to the last day of camp and turn it into, you know, That's something fantastic yeah. and fun yeah. every year, which is, you know, when is, what is it. the last day? August What's 2nd. It? So we is really, that Saturday? that's a Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Monday through Thursday. So, I mean, like, we need That's our meeting. <laughs> things like, you know, I mean, people who own, like, I don't know, snow snow cone, like, yeah, you know, like or yeah. snow or cone like trucks that. or ice cream trucks. We're only talking about, on average, 10 to 15. 15 homeless children per site. So that's 30 total, right? And then you got to factor in the youth volunteers. We don't want to leave them out. Right. But that's grown folks. We can pay for our own treat. But if, a, you know, somebody who owns a truck or whatever can just come by and surprise the kids and just let them have at it, hey, what, let's do that What time tomorrow. is that, the carnival on the last day? Mm. It's usually all day, so each site has a different start time. I think uh, Hartford Family House is from 9 to 2.30, mm -hmm. whereas Anna's House is from 10 mm -hmm. to 3-ish. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. But so anybody can that. contact us. Just go to our website and hit the Contact Us button. There's a, a quick little thing you can fill out. And let us know your interest. And so as we get closer to, you know, narrowing down some times for events, we'd be happy to, to work with, with those volunteers. Now, you already have somebody to grill. 
<laughs> this, this but we don't have no meat. So <laughs> if you know a butcher. Yeah. Uh, actually. This, this is right up Tammy's alley. Uh-huh. Yeah. Do you need a DJ? Why that not? Last day? Yeah, because yeah. her poor mother just... I think they're taught a da 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 because I play this carnival music that after a while their heads I was going to say, how can you do the whip and the nay-nay to carnival oh, music? Oh, if you, you know? DJ, I will have to just brush my shoulders off and get it ready. I will whip and nay-nay and moonwalk. Are you listening out there? You have, you have a DJ. Yay. You have a DJ for the Thank last you. day now. Woo-woo! I, uh, actually... My son, I'll, I'll talk to my son because he's younger. <laughs> he knows what Nene is. Or, no, I know what it is. And I can dab. <laughs> That's how I do that for her. Uh, dab, dip, whatever it's called. Uh, no, I, I, I just love the idea of the carnival games. But no, you got a DJ. No matter what, if my son says no, I'll do it. <laughs> um, a snowball truck. That actually is a great idea. And I, isn't there a local one? I think so. I've seen some. Every now and again, we see something running through our neighborhood in the summer. Yeah, I've seen, and I've seen one a couple, that goes to a lot so. of events. Yeah, so we, you know, we don't we don't have any relationships with any of them. Um, I've, you know, in fact, at one of our uh, one of the years at Anna's house, someone did come out and okay. surprise the kids, mm-hmm. and it was. Fantastic. They loved it. They loved it. was such a major hit. Green truck? I can't Those remember. Yellow? Yeah. Kunai, Koja, I can't Kuna, remember. Whatever. Yeah. But they, they were very nice people. And um, so if you're listening out there and you remember who you are, I just was a little shy about saying your name in case you didn't want that level of publicity. <laughs> um, what kind we of thank you. For? We thank you. Well, the kids will eat... Um, Beef hot dogs and chicken hot dogs. And, um... There's no, like, pit beef or nothing like that? Oh, we can go there if you want to. There's no no holding back on our part. (laughs) How big's your grill? Just a little one. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Hmm. All right, maybe I'll get my son to DJ. We'll bring down our grills. We'll do some pit beef and everything. All right. Some fried octopus, grilled octopus. We'll go all out. You know, but since we can't do beer can chicken, we can do like Dr. Pepper chicken. Oh. These kids will love it, and so will their their friends. I would have a blast doing something like that. Oh, our friends at Anna's house will absolutely love that, and so will our friends at Harford Family House. So we'll make sure we give you the two dates, because as it turns out, Anna's house is only going to be that first week from July 9th through 12th. So the 12th will be their carnival, and then Harford Family House will be August 2nd will be their carnival. So, you know, we're, we're happy to have help at either or both of those locations. Okay. And, and um, we just want to make sure that the children we'll have a good time. Somehow. I mean, you know, and, and, and we're, we're, we're building the schedules now with, you know, field trips. You know, we're, we're excited that we've got a dairy farm up in uh, Perryville oh, that the kids yes. are going to visit. And, you know, mm-hmm. we're trying to get an equestrian center somewhere. One of Grace uh, and Alexia's oh, yeah. kept, uh, fellow board members is working on a, a, a person who, who has a horse farm. So that'd be pretty cool to learn about, you know, grooming the horses, the horses. and even taking a quick ride. So I'm just, just trying to connect the What other kind of field dogs. trips you're looking for? Hey, just it, think about this it. This is the man, Lyle's the master of field trips because he's mm-hmm. come up with a lot of great ideas. So, you know, which. Hey, some of them are that are rather, you know, on the very l- lowest end, which be no cost. Things like eating meals or, you know, know and one year they came out to, to us. They came out to Anna's house and brought their snakes and turtles. And yeah. that was so much fun. But, you know, there could be, I don't know, Jerusalem they, mills. I don't know. I don't think that costs. But then there's no. like, is there a discount, though, for the other things that kids like to do in the summer, like putt-putt? Oh, yeah. yeah so if we can get swimming, if yeah. we can get discounts, you know, we can serve. Um, was able to win a <coughs> micro grant from the WE organization and, and Allstate Foundation. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, the Good Starts Young initiative. And they um, granted we can serve with a $250 micro grant that these two young ladies have devoted that money specifically towards field trips 
But you and I and the rest of your listeners know that money will burn fast yeah. Yeah. if we don't have discounts. And so we want to take advantage of of the good hearts of the people in Hartford County. And we've got a lot of good hearted people oh, yeah, around yeah. here who could open their doors to, to you know, roughly 15 kids at um, each of the sites. Now, with the field trips, do you guys have a bus company that actually helps you out, or is that something else that... So both of the sites actually have vans that they can transport their own children from the um, homeless transitional programs, and we can serve parents. We will transport our junior counselors. We'll get them there to help out. What's really fascinating to me is that we've got such not only good-hearted adults in Harford County, good-hearted children, so much so... That one year in particular at Anna's house, every child who was a happy camper, as we call them, had their own personal junior counselor. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. I had a lot of volunteers. So these that kids year. had one on one attention for everything they did. That's That's fantastic. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you guys still stay in touch? The one on one, do you guys still stay in touch with those people as much as you can? It's a little tricky because they actually sign up through those. They have to be vetted by the actual organizations they're right. supporting, like Anna's House or Hartford Family House. So I believe there's some follow-on with those organizations. Okay. So Because that's, that's just really how we set up. I mean, the model we can serve is really to um, be of service to the organization and the people we serve without creating burdens. We want to make right. it easy for them as well. Well, right. I guess the reason I was saying is if you, if you keep in touch with them, because at 13, still, you've already been doing this for how many years now? Seven. Seven years. But some of these people, when they become adults, mm-hmm. they can be your motivational speakers mm-hmm. at Camp Happy to come back mm-hmm. and... Talk about know, their successes. and Exactly. And, and yeah, how they, because they've overcome their, you know, their uh, issues in early in life. And, and, and to me, that would... Of course, then you're, it, all it's going to do with you is make you smile from ear to ear. Because when, when you <laughs> hear of somebody that you helped, and I think I've always said the biggest gift or the biggest, to me, the biggest thing, the biggest thrill in life is giving and seeing that whatever you gave made a difference in that person's life and Definitely. made them happy. I mean, like, even one time there was a pep rally at my school, and um, a lady that worked at my school, she came up to me and she, she told me that, she told my mom that she had received, um, I think, toys from us um, that her daughter played with while they were homeless. Now they have a home, and her daughter is in the same grade as I am. And so I had no idea. Like, right. I like I didn't really know her, but I had seen her. I would noticed her before, and I, I knew that that was her mom, but I had no idea what they were going through. So now I see her every day, and so I'm able to say hi and you know, ask how they're doing and everything. I mean, we're in similar clubs and everything. So, like, it was really impactful that day just to know that I had impacted someone that I had just met because I was in sixth grade. Good so feeling, like, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it was great <laughs> to know that, you know, you never really know who is out there that you have helped, and it's good to know that. Yeah. It, it just, it, it, it sends chills up your spine. Yeah, you know, I wonder if, uh, same, along the same lines, you know, maybe pen pal type programs with mm-hmm. some of the other, the older kids that transition and they can, you know, uh, uh, keep in touch through mm-hmm. letters and well today it's the uh, yeah, Twitter and the, the, yeah, now <laughs> the email and all that. Yeah. Uh, Actually, Lyle's been thing. trying to find somebody that the yeah. Lions sponsor or whatever a while ago. Yeah, we had uh, back in 74, 73, 74, we had a young girl from uh, Peru that we sponsored. And I think she was about 12 years old at the time. And so the Lions sponsored her for uh, through her equivalent of high school years and I came across the archives um, or or the uh, information about her in our archives and I thought well you know what why don't we try to find out where she is and so I just did a little bit of searching I think I found her but I've given uh, one of the Leos uh, the opportunity to try to track her down and see if we can't see what she's you know what she's done in the last 45 years where her life is and you know how she's made out but I think uh, she might be living right down the road. Yeah, right now. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but you know, it, it it might be a good thing for you know some of these kids that they go through the these programs and uh, not only impart their wisdom with the younger the younger kids coming in, um, 
but just maintaining lifetime lifetime relationships, friendships. I heard that too. Okay. <laughs> Say it's not the air conditioner kicking on. Yeah. It's not a mouse. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother's gonna be like, "Where is that thing?" If that was a mouse, I thought it was a big one. <laughs> Probably just the metal roof. Yeah. Away from the temperature. <laughs> yeah, when you were emailing, <laughs> you were emailing me. Did you say there was something big in May? Yeah. yeah so May is um, National, National Foster Care Awareness Month, and okay. so that's where we do a lot with the boutique, and okay. so. Um, we have our workshop for the teen girls foster care and the opening of the boutique also during that month. So it's a lot for them. Very good. Anything else to add? Besides the fact that you just want, you need more clothes and more help and more volunteers. More volunteers. Speakers for Camp Happy. <laughs> more of that than we do clothes, actually. Yes, yeah, we have we, a lot of clothes for the lot. boutique. And so... But, um, I mean, when Threads of Hope comes around in August, that could be of use. We have Threads of Hope? Yes, that is okay. where we give um, brand new or, like, new back-to-school clothes to every child oh, living okay. at Hartford Family House. So we give, like, some people give three or four outfits, you know, so there's really no limit as long as they are new or like new. We don't want to give them hand-me-downs or anything gross because they deserve better. Right. So, like, we don't want to make them feel bad giving them what we just threw away. We want them to feel just as special as anybody else. So we try to make sure that all the clothes look nice and everything. And so we just try our best with that. Well, you're doing an awesome Good. job. I have some thought that does it, something age limit. Oh, um, my saying for whenever people ask if there's anything else I want to say, I always say there is no age limit on service. Amen to that. You're right. You're right. Well, well, you started it when you were two. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, two, you all, you've been doing it 11 years now. Yeah. So, <laughs> and you're going to keep doing it till you're a hundred and eleven. <laughs> you know. So no, that, that's all. I like. Can I keep that quote? <laughs> <laughs> Alexi, you got anything to say? To add? No. No, I'll just keep it quiet. <laughs> hey, at least it's not live. This is recorded. I would say, you know, is it live or is it Memorex? But you two would look at me like, what in the world are you talking about? So you look at her like, it's like, what? That's right, the parents, no, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to thank you all again for coming on. Um, and if there's, hopefully we'll get you back. I, I would love to have you back on again. Um, and hopefully you'll, you know, come and talk to the Leos. Maybe even cut, actually, maybe get you to come talk to the lion. Maybe we do a joint meeting. Yeah, yeah. I think we should. Have her come yeah. talk to the Leos yeah. and the Lions. I'll yeah. bring my board members. Yeah, that, that'd be great. Maybe we can, uh, maybe do it at Town Grown Bar or something. It's nice. I'm, I'm sure uh, Linda and Larry might let us use the uh, patio. Yeah, we can reserve that. I'm, I'm, I bet they'll, uh, they'll mm. do that, sure. Especially if you want good food. Are yes. they the same guys? May not be as good as what your father grew up. <laughs> yeah, but, are they, I'm sorry, dude. What? Same folks that owned it when it was on 40? Town? The Town Grill, Grill and Pub? No. Oh, okay, because it used to be one called the Town Grill and Pub on 40. It's now Loafers. But it oh, used to be yeah. called that. And I saw that they're now up there by the Amish market. And I've always wanted to know, are they the same yeah. people? Yeah, different No, different, yeah, different, uh, different people. people. It okay. used to be Grill Sensations. Yeah. Ah. And... Then what they expanded, so they changed the name to Town Grill and Pub. But they're actually from Aberdeen. Oh. Uh, even though Brad, who does all the cooking, lives here in Joppa. Yeah. But the funny thing is, I got to laugh because Brad's a vegan. <laughs> but when, when it comes to cooking beef and everything, oh, it's it is just amazing. <laughs> I, I, the one of the things I've been eating there before was the pot roast milk sandwich. Mm. Oh yeah, but he told he told me he's like he rich. I'm doing it. The only place I know in the county that has a vegan menu. He's like here you gotta try this. I said what is it? He said a vegan meatball sub. Okay. I'm like Wait, vegan and meatball that that, that doesn't <laughs> go together there, Brad. He's like trust me, try it. Best meatball sub I ever had. Wow. I gotta try <laughs> if you it. didn't if you didn't know it, and I yeah. had it too because I don't eat meat. If you don't if if you don't know it, you would think it was real. And I'm oh, not a man. vegan. Yeah. 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 I've yeah. had my share of being a vegan. Mm. I, I often think about going back. But, but uh, they have real food there, too. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll, I'll talk to them and see if we can do something That's awesome. down there. That'd be, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, but that, and that, like I said, definitely get you back on here. And in the meantime, if there's any 
in particular speakers or anything you want for Camp Happy or anything else, let me know. Because um, I, I said everything from, God, well, people as young as you to the county executive on here. Oh, so, yeah. um, and, you know, we can get, hopefully get some people. Maybe even some famous people. You know, there are a lot of famous people from Harford County. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of actors and all. Mm-hmm. So, you never yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to There's one guy named Rich Bennett. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you guys do any, uh, later on with the older kids, do any um, anything with, with um, uh, speakers that might talk about career opportunities, uh, yes. things that they can pursue? I, there was a group I met a couple of years ago down at an air show at, at Martin Marietta called the 99s. They're oh. women in aviation. And they go all the way back to Amelia Earhart is when it was the group was actually formed, and uh, every every member is a, a either a current or former pilot, military, commercial, or both, and they love the opportunity to talk to young ladies, um, thinking about, and it's not just about careers in aviation; it's just professional women. Period. They love to come out and talk. Um, that's a group if if you would be interested. You know, Definitely. I can, Definitely. Yeah. I tried to get the, the, the Leos, and they were kind of, oh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I think the girls at the group home would just gravitate yeah. to that. And if I may, I just had an idea. It would be really hot if you guys would approve, because I don't make any decisions. I work for them. <laughs> now that I got that out the way. If the um, the 99s were willing to, to fly maybe one of their smaller planes Ooh. over to the airfield in Forest Hill, and we bring the girls from the group home over there, and they do it, awesome. wouldn't it? And so we can do a talk, a tour. Sure. And they don't necessarily have to go up in the air because there's a whole lot of liability there. But just yeah. to be able to see, you know, her with her plane and then talk and just have a a real, you know, a real conversation, a prepared, prepared remarks, and mm-hmm. then let the girls ask questions. Sure. Because yeah. when you're kind of bound by your circumstances, mm-hmm. you want to fly away. And that is more than symbolic. Yeah, you got yeah, it. Get, and yeah. so why not? Let's, right. let's. Yeah, That's, yeah I, I like that. That's a good idea. So if they yeah. permit me to work that, I'd be happy to work that for you. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Go yeah. ahead, Mom. Yeah. Go, okay, thank you. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Run with it. Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, once again, thanks again. Um, and for anybody else, if you want to come on the podcast, of course, it's free to come on. Just uh, email us, podcast at hartfordcountyliving.com. Um, it's our way of basically promoting businesses and nonprofits uh, in the county. And uh, eventually we'll go to the history stuff, uh, do some of them. But um, like I've always said, there's so much here in the county and a lot of people don't know about uh, not just the history, but the businesses and the nonprofits. Uh, I think there's over 500 nonprofits just in Harford County, which is a lot and everybody's trying to do something good. So again, if you want to come on, just contact me and I want to thank you guys again. And, uh, Hopefully we'll be talking to you in, I don't know, maybe uh, before July. Definitely. If not, then definitely after. We can talk about how well Camp Happy went. Yeah. And how good that grilled food was that your father made. (laughs) Thanks, guys. Very good. I want to share an amazing experience I had with Tar Hill Construction Group when I needed to install a new roof on my home. Let me tell you, they are truly a cut above the rest. Tar Hill Construction Group is an award-winning residential and commercial roofing and exteriors contractor, focusing on roofing, siding, gutters, and solar solutions. Proudly serving Baltimore, Harford, and Cecil counties, they make it their priority to make a positive impact in the communities they serve first while providing exceptional services in roofing and exteriors. From start to finish, Tar Hill Construction Group proved to be a reputable and dependable contracted solution. Their quality installations and good communication kept me informed and reassured throughout the entire process. It's no wonder they have been voted Harford's best roofing contractor and best home improvement contractor for three years running. But here's what really impressed me. Tar Heel Construction Group's commitment to continued service and registered warranties. They stand behind their work, ensuring that I have peace of mind for years to come. What's even more remarkable is their dedication to giving back to the community. They aggressively support and uplift the neighborhoods they serve, making a positive difference in people's lives. 
I feel incredibly grateful and humbled to have chosen Tar Hill Construction Group for my roof. They have earned my trust and respect for being the only contractor to be voted Harford's best roofing contractor and Baltimore's best roofing contractor in the same year. So if you're looking for top-notch roofing and exterior solutions, look no further than Tar Hill Construction Group. Visit their website at tarhillconstructiongroup.com or give them a call at 410-638-7021. Again, that's 410-638-7021. Experience the excellence and community impact for yourself. Tar Hill Construction Group, building excellence one roof at a time. 